let's start the casting on process by creating a slip knot. And let's grab our afghan hook and insert it into the loop just like this. And what I want to do is that I want to um, just chain like I normally would with crochet. So you're holding it in your hands just like you normally would and we're just gonna start off and I want 10. Remember the loop on the hook never counts as one. So we have one and two and three, four and five, six, seven, and eight, nine, and ten. So there is your first starting chain of just ten. So the goal is is that if I started off with ten, when I come back there should be ten loops left on the actual afghan hook and I'll show you that in just a sec. The next part of the process is that we're gonna start collecting all of the loops that are on this chain onto this actual afghan hook. How you do it is that you go and count to the second one of the, uh, from the hook. So you've got one and two. What I strongly recommend is that don't grab any of the front side so you can see the nice stitch work in the front. Grab it the loop that's on the back. Okay, so grab that loops on the back. Once you get the first one, the rest of the road or a chain just turns over on itself anyway. So just grabbing your hook, just go into the back loop only. Okay, and that's second chain from the hook. Okay, insert into the chain, yarn over and pull through. And leave it on your hook. Okay, so let's go into the next one. So we just move to the next one that's available to you. And once you do the first one as I said it turns over. By doing the back loop only or the back hump whatever you wanna call it, it actually makes the, the curl less likely um, to happen. It still will happen but it won't be as severe. So you keep just going down the chain on the back loop just like this. And we're doing the casting on process. And so if I started off with uh, I chained 10, I should have 10 of these on my crochet hook by the end of by the end of the the chain. So I'm just moving my way slowly. Getting started with Tunisian is always a bit of a task. I'm not gonna deny that but once you're started it gets a lot easier as you get to hold on to more of the project. Do you notice that I'm sliding the project down every time I put it on so I just don't immediately just start and go into the next one. I slide it down so that I can get it around the thickness of the shaft so that each of the stitches are consistent. Don't forget to do that. So regardless of what size it is, make sure you slide it to get that right thickness. And I believe that this is the last one but I'm gonna just double count and make sure that I have 10 on my hook. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So I have 10 here so I'm actually done. So I've chained my 10 and now I've collected. Now just like I told you in the intro is that we never ever turn our work. So what we're going to do no matter what we do on this particular series at all and in most Tunisian projects is that you're always just going to come back doing the exact same thing each and every time. If you're doing other color combinations or whatever then that's when it changes but this is what we're gonna do each and every time. To come back what you need to do is that before you start the process is that we need to yarn over and pull through the beginning loop first only once. So just yarn over and pull through the first loop. That acts as a chain so that it can move up the row. Okay so it's just like it would be if, if you turned it in its regular crochet hook and we chain one to do a single crochet all the way across. It's the same process but we're doing it on this side instead. Now this is the fun part. You're going to yarn over and pull through two, two loops now and you're going to continue to do that all the way back. So you're yarning over and pulling through two. Now before I go any further you're going to notice that there's a vertical string that is very obvious and in your face. This is where we're going to be playing within this vertical string when it comes to the simple stitch. When we and when we do the purl stitch we're also going to be playing on this vertical and then when we do the knit stitch that's when it gets a little complicated and I'll show you more about that. So we're just gonna continue to yarn over and pull through two all the way back. So we've simply just cast it on and we're ready to go with any kind of stitch that you wanna do. Okay, so 
coming all the way back. Okay, so this is um, the casting on process. We've just came all the way back. Now it appears that we have a picket fence going on and this is the interesting thing about Tunisian and we'll cover this when we cast off but I'll tell you now. When you go to finish this project you don't actually finish on this side of your hook. You actually finish off on this side because what happens is, is that this is only half of the stitches done on this particular row. It's not until you go back in this direction that you actually do finish off that row completely and I'll show you that in just a moment.